Good morning, guys. We just want to take a few moments to share what's been going on in our household over the last uh, few weeks during our quarantine COVID-19 crisis. So we thought we'd begin by our normal morning routine. Each morning, the boys wake up to a very healthy breakfast. Good morning. Hi. See, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's a lot of sugar. But don't worry, we used Diet Pepsi. After a hearty breakfast, our kids are very eager to get started with their schoolwork. Let's check in to see what Carter is working on today. Hey, Carter, what are you working on? Math. Math? What are you using your phone for? Calculator. That's very resourceful. Let's, let's check in on that. What is that? That's not calculator. <laughs> now let's go check and see what Jackson is doing. Hey, Jackson, what have you been working on? Math. Math. So why don't you share with us some of the strategies you've been working on that's helping you solve your problems in math. Hey Alexa, what's 654 plus 358? 654 plus 358 is 1012. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. I don't know about your kids, but our kids have been perfect role models of how to get along and doing everything in which they're supposed to do. They never fight and they always play so well together. So let's take a look at them and see how they are doing outside. Because we've had so much extra time, we've spent lots of quality time doing various activities together. Check out a few of the activities we've done, done together. As most Americans, we have had a lot of extra time on our hands, so we have decided that we as a family would do a lot of hard work and work around our house. So this is what we decided to do. Seriously though, our family has been healthy, we have been blessed, we have spent time together, we have done some great things together, we've worked hard, um, find, finding different ways, and we just want to wish all of you guys a very happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Church at Home. We are so glad you're joining us, and if this is your first time or you've been here before, we are so glad you are here. Thank you for joining us and being a part of Thrive Church and our church at home. We want to begin with the most important thing today. It is Mother's Day, and so make sure that you have uh, got a plan to honor the moms in your life uh, today. And so we, we hope you've been thinking about it, because if this is just catching you right now, you're in trouble, just own it, ask for forgiveness, and you better do something really big to make up for it. Today's Mother's Day, it's a day and a chance to honor the moms in our lives. And we're so glad, moms, you're watching today. Happy Mother's Day, and we hope you have an incredible, incredible day. We want you to connect with us. We think that's really important because we want to connect with you, and 
but we need you to take that first step. So if you would, if you're on Facebook, watching on Facebook Live, if you would just like and comment, and if you really like it, share it today. That would be awesome if you would do that. If you're on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, you can like the video, you can comment as well. And if you're on our online church platform, you're at thriveinenola.online.church, we would love for you to say hi in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. Okay, and say happy Mother's Day to the moms out there as well. You can do all of that on our platform, but we would love to connect with you. Wednesday night is our chance for our youth to connect and to be together. That happens at 7 o'clock on our online platform, thriveinenola.online.church. And we hope that you will join in. And parents, you're doing a great job making sure your kids get connected. We want them to have a place to connect. We want to have a place to share. This week's going to be a little special. They're going to be focused on our seniors. And so tune in Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, as they kind of honor the seniors who have been a part of the the Rock Youth Ministry. Also want to remind you, Thursday night is prayer meeting, and thank you for those who have been a part of that. Some of you have just sent in prayer requests. That's awesome. We would love for you to do that. You can do that at any time this morning. You can go to our website. There's a prayer request link, and that goes directly to me. Nobody else sees that. We'd love to pray for you, and if, if it's something personal, we we will honor that. So we would love to have a chance to pray for you. Thursday nights when that happened, you can join us. Uh, you can find that link in our Facebook group. And if you aren't a part of that, just send us a request. We'd love to have you a part of that. So this was our theme this year for Kids Camp. And we got together this week as a camp board and realized that the camp that we use, Jericho Hills, is not going to be able to host our camp. Uh, too many kids, restrictions going on, and so this made us incredibly sad. Uh, this is the first year in a long time. I will just say I've been at camp. This would have been 24 straight years that I've been a part of this ministry, and it's just amazing. And so we hated to do it, um, but we're going to be back next year. Kids, don't worry. We're going to try to find some way to connect with you if we can over the summer. But... We'll be back next year. We're going to try to come back stronger than ever. And so uh, encourage the kids in your life. We know they're going to miss camp, and we are going to miss them being a part of camp. This is something we've been doing, and so I need you to, to help me out with this and send in a request and, and let me know what you're doing. If you see somebody else doing this, that would be great as well. Uh, we just want to know how you're being the church every day. And so one of the things that's going on, and I knew Rosemary was doing this, is she's been making masks. And she's been helping people uh, who, who need them, and she's just... You know, got a sewing machine, and she's been uh, making those. And so this is her niece, Angeline, up at the Cheesecake Factory, where she is a manager up there. And so that's Angeline wearing the mask that, that her aunt gave her. So way to go, Rosemary. Thank you for doing that. And she's been doing this all over the place. So we appreciate you doing that. Let us know how you're being the church every day and how you're making a difference in other people's lives. Now, one I included because I just had to. This was a really cool moment that took place this week. And that is Mac came home. Hi, Mac. We hope you're watching this morning. Uh, Mac's back for uh, a bit before for the next part uh, of her training. And so, uh, and I want you to know, Chris, I worked really hard to find a picture where you weren't crying in it, okay? I worked really hard on that. So this was a great gift for, uh, for Chris and for Stacy to have Mac back. And so good to have you back, been praying for you. And so just wanted to include this cool thing that happened this week. How do I give? You guys have been amazing, you've been generous, and that allows us to do ministry. That allows us to do the things that we've been doing. So how do I give? You give by mail, you can mail us a check. We, many of you have been doing that. Uh, you can do it online. We have an incredible online platform that's easy to use, uh, safe and secure. You can set up your gift and it can be reoccurring and you can just make sure that you're generous uh, all, all the time and even when you're not aware of it. So set it up 
we appreciate those of you who have been doing that. The last way is a really easy way. You can take out your phone and you can text the word GIVE to this number, 515-996-4483. And what that will do is not just tack money onto your cell phone bill. None of us want that. It will actually send you back a link and connect you with our online platform. But it will do all of that through text and we hope that you will uh, do that. And thank you. Again, you've been so generous. We had one of our best giving months in April. So thank you for being so generous and giving during this time. This morning, after worship, we have something special for you. I was able to sit down with three moms, uh, Callie, Terica, Rosemary, to talk about their journey, what it's like to be a mom, things they did right, things they've struggled with, and to hope that you will find some encouragement today. And so these three moms are going to be sharing here in a little bit after we worship together. So Cheyenne and the team are coming, and they're going to lead us in worship this morning, and then you're going to listen to a conversation with three moms. Good morning, Thrive Church, and um, happy Mother's Day. We're so glad you could join us. Um, we're going to do a little worship this morning, so worship how you feel comfortable.
Strip on me, you have broken every chain. 
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living
we just come before you today and we just thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for all the mothers or mother figures in our lives, Lord. Um, we are so thankful for them and we just know that we might not be here um, or where we are today without them. Um, I just pray for everybody in this uncertain times that um, we can just know not to be fearful because you are in ultimate control. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Thrive family, and I am here with three ladies who are going to share a little bit about what it means to be a mom, and especially what it means to be a mom during this time. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, and these moms are going to introduce themselves to you right now. Hi, I'm Terika Rieger, and I have two children. Evelyn is three, she'll be four in July, and Corbin is, well, by the time this airs, he will be 18 months. Thanks. I'm Callie Chilton. I have two kiddos. I have a daughter who will be nine at the end of the month, and Lennox, who is now seven and a half, or will be, let's see, in two days. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Hi, I'm Rosemary Thiel, and I've got adult children and eight grandchildren, so I will have quite a different perspective than <laughs> these You have all ladies. the answers for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's just start with, what do you think the best moment has been for you as a mom? Your favorite moment? Who wants to start? <laughs> well, I can say um, I'm going to be fairly generic in my answers because my children are adults, and <laughs> I can't point out specific things that I may have when they were younger because this goes to the world, so, you know. <laughs> so I, the best thing I that I've had is as a mom is having all three of my babies and having all eight of my grandchildren. That's the best moments of my life. Yeah. Awesome. I'm kind of not similar to you with the range of uh, ages you have and grandchildren they have, but the moments part, I couldn't really pick one. I really think like all the little moments that you have with your kids that they kind of shine through certain things and those kind of turn into the best moments, like um, things about your kids that you see pop up, like Liana, um, she's very um, observant about others, so just seeing her growing into that and, you know, if I do this, you know, what's this going to be, what's that, gonna, what's going to happen with that, or what will happen if this happens, something kind of like that um, with her. Um, but with Lennox, too, he's kind of my... Um, the one who never forgets anything, which is good and bad, but on the good side of it, he notices things that a lot of people wouldn't or kids his age wouldn't. Um, he will like notice his grandma's haircuts. Uh, he will notice if something's different in your house, like, oh, you got a new something. Like He just notices all those little things and comments about them and just is good about doing that thing. So little things like that put together. Um, and just seeing their you know, kindness coming through is kind of the best mo moment that I think for our kiddos. Um, I think, yeah, I can't pick like a specific moment because it's too it's hard. hard. My kids haven't been around that long. So <laughs> um, I think for me, it's the moment that they get something that you've been working on. Like if it's a color or a number or, you know, whatever. Um, one thing was Evie, surprisingly, like we'd been teaching, we'd been reading her Bible verses every night, just the same Bible verse over and over. And um, one night she just spouted off Romans 3.23 to us and we were like, we didn't know you knew that. <laughs> and it was such a proud mom moment. Like we weren't even really trying hard to teach it to her. Um, but it was pretty exciting. And just when they, you know, like Corbin's figuring out I can say, like, go get your shoes, and he gets his shoes and brings them to me, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool, you learned how to get your shoes. <laughs> so, um, just the, when they have those aha moments, and and then, um, yeah, yeah, I think just the little, the first time they say I love you is really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty like, good one. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> a pretty good one. Those yeah. moments, yeah. they soon go away. Yep. So, yeah, I'm soaking it up while I can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All those extra hugs. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so what about the opposite spectrum, okay? The ones that you're like, oh, I 
think of a bad mom, right? <laughs> Very funny know. moment. One of those. Rosemary, you want to go first. Uh, I, since my kids are adults, I'm not going to name them or be specific. <laughs> <laughs> because well, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> but anyway, um, generally when my children hurt or my grandchildren hurt, I hurt too. And sometimes more than they hurt. Uh, but you have to keep a positive perspective let them grow, not interfere with their decisions they've made, good or bad. You have to be with them. And our children were raised in church, so uh, let God handle it. That's good advice. That's awesome. Mine um, worst moments, I really thought about um, just kind of not all silly stories, but one with Lennox. Um, when we went on vacation, we were going back to a hotel room and he happened to hop onto the elevator before anybody else did. And we were about like 20 floors up. Um, so he went alone in an elevator, 20 <laughs> floors up. And really like the first two floors, you could hear him yelling the whole time. So it was slightly funny and we were laughing. And then all of a sudden when you don't hear his voice anymore, it was like, okay, my stomach is hurting. Like we've got to get to this crazy kid. Um, so once we got up there, like another family was with him waiting, but I mean, being the mom, you're just like, I literally can't believe I did that. Why didn't I like jump onto the elevator in time? Nobody else was in there with him. Um, it was just one of those like crazy moments where you definitely didn't feel good afterwards. It, it was kind of heart wrenching for a little while. Um, but luckily we could all laugh at that when we were done. So he was okay. He was safe. Um, for Liana, she had a just a crazy incident one time. We were getting ready to head home, visiting family, and um, she got bumped on cement steps uh, and hit her head on the cement step, like the very last step. And it actually got bumped by her grandpa. So we had to go to the ER after that because she hit really hard. And um, yeah, that was scary. So I, I really wish we didn't have to have that moment, but she was okay. and. It was all okay, but she was not very happy with Grandpa for a little while. So, but they're good now. They've, they've made up. Takes her on horse horseback rides and fishing, so we're good. Um, so I was struggling with. I, I thought I knew my answer, and then I asked Tim what his answer would be, and it was funny because he said exactly what I was thinking, um, which is those moments that. Um, when I lose my temper with my kids, and I know that I'm not disciplining in love. <laughs> I'm disciplining out of my own sin and my anger and my wanting to be in control and wanting them to obey and, you know, submit to me. And um, I have one child specifically who um, <laughs> is very strong-willed, and uh, so it happens a lot that I lose my cool, and um, it just, when you're when your child looks at you and they, they see that, they have that afraid look, you know, and, um, or when you hear them playing house and they start yelling at their kids and you're like, or their baby dolls, and you're like, oh no, that's ver verbatim what I said, you know, like I very recently heard her say, I said, or I told you, and I'm like, oh, that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> so those moments where I'm, I'm definitely not disciplining or you know even spanking out of love but i'm doing it out of anger my own sin that's that's probably the worst moments sure. and other than that hospital anytime you're in the hospital that's yeah. the worst that's, <laughs> we've been pretty fortunate knock on whatever yeah, right yeah, <laughs> yeah. both of mine scary. have had hospital so that's yeah not fun no my three did and my grandkids have yeah. so yeah i know <laughs> Yeah. I think wow. I own a wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should have your family with <laughs> So for the last, I don't even know how many weeks we are in this uh I didn't this even know COVID, what today was. So. Right? <laughs> don't even know what today is. So that's brought a lot of challenges. So that's what I want to talk about. What what have you seen during this time that's been the, the biggest challenge for you during this whole COVID event where we've been quarantined and locked down, no school, you probably relate to that a lot, Callie. And so just, you know, just talk through that. What do you think your biggest challenge is right now? 
Well, I'm, my situation is obviously different than theirs where my kids are little. Um, so like their life hasn't changed a whole lot. We, they're not in school. Um, so like in that aspect, they're not affected, but we do a lot and we go a lot of places and we, you know, have play dates and go places. And, um, I have a, I have a very, very extroverted child. Um, so in that regard, it's been hard. Um, it's been nice in that they're not scared. They don't understand, yeah. um, what's going on. They'll, they'll have no memory of this probably. Um, but I have to use very basic, um, I basically just say like, oh, there's a lot of people that are sick and there's germs, so we can't go here or there. And, um, you know, obviously Corbin has no idea. Um, Evie kind of can understand and she's to the point that she'll say like, mommy, when everybody gets better, can we go back to the playground? Or she said to me this, just this morning, when, when we get to, when the church opens back up after people aren't sick, can Corbin wear his bow tie? <laughs> so, you know, they, they have a small understanding of what's going on. Um, but for me, it's probably actually more, I'm more affected <laughs> because my kids need me 24 seven. There's no go play by yourself. It just doesn't happen at that age. Um, so I have to be on all the time. And, uh, so my challenge has just been, you know, those moments where normally I would be like, okay, let's, you know, go have a play date at Angie or Chris's or let's go, you know, here or there, and we had a few weeks where we didn't, um, we didn't do anything with my parents either, and they're my, like, <laughs> go-to, come get your grandchild, I can't do this, <laughs> um, and so for me, that's probably been the hardest, um, is just that the sanity of <laughs> not having a lot, not having any time to myself, and even if I do have time to myself, I don't really, can't really leave the house. There's nowhere to go. So I'm still in my home all the time. So that's been really hard. Thankfully, Tim's been working from home a couple days a week, and that has been very needed. Because <laughs> he's at least there if I need, he's if I need a, a five, five minute break. Like a shower, <laughs> yeah. 10, 20 Right? Or if he hears screaming, he knows to come down yeah. and intervene. <laughs> oh, man. It's been, um, kind of crazy for us. We're all home, so everybody's on top of each other all the time. It's just noisy. It's kind of chaotic at times. I think everyone in our house has had a meltdown because of just all the changes. Um, we don't have a schedule, so it's that's hard. When you're used to your schedule, you're used to, we do this at school at this time, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, with voluntary school, we try and do everything that their teachers send out but I found that it's right now it's more of like a um, emotional mental battle for even our kids. Like it gets really stressful. I don't want to do math anymore. I've done this for so long. I already know that mom. Um, can I do Liana's math? You know, <laughs> there's just, it's kind of, it's just been kind of messy. So I try not to push that too much. Um, and that may sound weird coming from a substitute teacher who would, you know, push their kids at school to, be doing what you're supposed to be doing but I think it's really important to the emotional part of this like take your breaks at school you have recess you have mental breaks as well brain breaks at school you have um, PE so getting outside has been in, like necessary um, thankfully um, you know we have a big backyard so we can be outside quite a bit um, we can let the dogs run we can take walks ride bikes um, and then when, you know, on days like today when it's kind of gloomy, we are inside, we're doing, you know, some of those, you know, school things, but we try to do just things that can kind of get your brain going in other ways, creative things. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been kind of tough, but nothing that we can't figure out how to manage. And, um, I mean, the benefit, we've been able to get Anthony enrolled in classes online, so he's on to his master's program right now. Um, Liana and Lennox have been able to see their friends from class doing Zoom um, meetings with their teachers and their classmates. Lennox took like an art class with his art teacher the other day. That was pretty neat. Um, and then I, for myself, I've been teaching Zumba through Zoom as well. So I've had my me time, which is helpful. Those little normal parts of your day that you used to have, that helps having that even if it's virtual, but it's, it makes a little bit of a difference. Well, since my children are away, 
my older adults, I we talk, have conversations on the telephone. And my grandkids, I text them. Sometimes I FaceTime them. And um, my daughter is here in town. And I must say, uh, she's in the healthcare profession, so things are a little tricky there. But um, I still go to work. And um, it's not, it's an online business. So I just pull orders and it's the same people and nobody's sick. And I'm a, I make masks for other people. But I don't wear a mask that I think I should start. But I also, I don't know, maybe I'll add an extra mask in there too. So you. just me personally, uh, it, it's affected me because I'm a very social person. I like to go a lot and um, just go here, go there, go everywhere. And I'm not home very often, but now I have to be home more. Uh, I do uh, spend more time sewing. And I haven't spent as much time reading as I usually do because I like to read in the winter. I guess. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's that's kind of what it's been for me. It's not affected me a lot except for being able to go. My husband and I go a lot and are never home. So that's been hard for me. It's one of those yeah. times you wish you were an introvert. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They've got it made yeah. right now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that that <laughs> is. Because, I, you know, I've always been social on the go and always yeah. organizing things. Since I was little, I was the organizer. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And that's hard. Yeah, it is. It's hard to just be kind of stuck at home when you yeah. would love to go do other things. But, yeah. you know, I can remember the times when our kids were younger, like children, but... I always had, even though I have three children, I lots of times had six kids mm -hmm. because we would invite friends and, yeah. they, you know, and that's just a cinch. My house was like a tornado had gone <laughs> through it, but they had fun and yeah. I, that's the way I entertained them a lot. And uh, you know, you can't do that now, yeah. so it's, mm -hmm. it'll be very difficult. Because they all fought like all three <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you go, oh, I can't stand these kids anymore. <laughs> you know? So who, who in your life has kind of been an encouragement to you? Maybe a source for help when something's, you don't know what to do. And they've been a good resource for you as a mom to kind of look up to and talk to maybe about different challenges you might have. It would be my mother. She's my example, and I, that when I read that question, I immediately had an answer. <laughs> yeah. My mother. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there too. My mom, um, same thing. She's a good example. She's always been even now. She's really encouraging. Um, when I feel like I'm failing, she's um, doesn't. You know, we don't usually converse about it face to face, but she'll write me little notes or. You know, just good reminders and cards. Um, you know, you're doing such a great job. I love watching you be a mom. Just simple things like that. Um, but I, I'd have to say Anthony, too. Like, he is really good at reminding me my purpose and that I do a great job. You did all these things. Like, he lists them off when you're having a really terrible day. Like, you've done this. You've done this. You can do that. You just, I know you're not feeling the best right now, but you can do these things. You've done this. And, you know, he gives really good pep talks, I'll say. So... Those are my two main ones. I feel bad because I was <laughs> <laughs> not that my mom is <laughs> isn't a one of them, but um, actually, I ask my mom all the time, especially with Evie. I'm like, Mom, what do I do? And she's like, I don't know. I didn't know what to do with you when you acted like that. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it, you know, you worked out and you turned out okay. So, um, no, obviously, my mom is one of them, but um, because we started having children um so much later than everyone else we had um you know we got married later and then we had infertility uh issues and so for us we were like the last of our friends to get married and the last of our friends to have kids so we had so many people to watch and um and to be actively involved with their children um and I, I can't even pick like one person because i have so many you know and some of them we look at we're like we're not going to be like that. <laughs> um, but a lot of them, you know, we can go, hey, that's something really cool. Um, 
that we like how they have raised their children. Um, I know uh, Tim has a twin brother and he and his wife have been um, one that we've really liked watching um, how they parent and just the way that they are very intentional with their parenting. Um, and even from like a really young age, they bring their children back to, to where's your heart? Who are you thinking about? Are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about your sibling? Are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about what you want? Are you thinking about what God wants for you? Um, and when I first heard them, you know, address my nieces and nephews who were like, you know, were little, little at the time, I'm like, what in the world? They're so young to be, you know, but I've seen them um, now when the oldest is 15 and I've seen, you know, the young lady that she's turned into and I'm like, oh, you know, they're doing it right. So um, they've been a really good, um, I think, example for us. And, um, but like I said, I've got, I have my certain friends who I know, you know, like the potty training expert and the, <laughs> yeah. the car seat expert. And, you know, you just get those people in your mind and it's nice to have all different all different people and um, I have my friend who has a strong willed child who's a little bit older that I can call and say, what do I do? And she says, it will get better, it will get better. <laughs> so, <laughs> good. Well, good. So you all have people in your life and Rosemary, your mom, how old is Mary? 95. 95. Yes. She's incredible. And I still call her when I'm cooking. <laughs> yes, and that, that's just amazing. Yes. It's just amazing. So I want to switch this for a little bit because there's going to be a lot of guys watching, all your husbands, right? And what's something you wish they knew about being a mom that you could help with guys watching going, I don't understand my wife and I don't understand some things. Uh, what would what would you say to them maybe to help them or something you, if you just knew this it would be better because I'm certain you know I frustrate my wife all the time because <laughs> I don't think the way she does and I don't approach things the way she does so what would you say about that well I feel very blessed because Tim is super hands-on as a dad um, He's always jumped right in, changed diapers, gotten bottles ready, um, burped the kids, whatever. Um, he's very, very good with that. Um, I think one thing, and this is this is maybe marriage in general, but specifically with the kids, is the fixing, where he just wants to fix everything. Yeah. And sometimes, like, you know, I'll call him during the day crying and saying, I don't know what to do. They're driving me crazy. And, oh, you know, and he wants to fix it. And sometimes I don't want mm -hmm. him to, you know, I'm like, you can't fix it. It's just life right <laughs> now. I want you to hear like, what I say. Yeah, I just want you to hear me. I want you to validate my feelings. I want you to tell me I'm doing a good job. And then I know what to do. You know, I know what I need to do. I don't need you to tell me. So I would say that's probably one of the big things. Um, and then also I think, um, I think, I'm closest to postpartum, so um, it's still fresh in my mind, is just that, like, during pregnancy and then right after you have a child, there is so many, there's so many hormones, and your body is so out of whack, and everything is just overwhelming and difficult, and just to really be hands-on and, like, to not have to ask is the best, and when they yeah. just do it, and you don't have to say, like, hey... Um, you know, can you get this and then get that and then get this and then do that? And they, if once you've got them trained well enough that they just know to do that, that is, that's the key is like, you know, if they know the schedule and like, Hey, it's time for this and they just do it and you don't have to tell them that's, well, my yeah, husband that's a sweet spot. And wasn't a hands-on dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt like I had to be everything. And, um. No diapers, no bottles, no feeding, no changing. But you're a different generation, too, which was a lot different. Yes, than. it is. Mm -hmm. it, it is a different generation. Quite different. And I, sometimes I just wanted to scream, I <laughs> can't do it all, yeah. but you had to, but yeah. you thought you had to do it all. Mm -hmm. And when you complained to your husband, he was a fixer. Mm -hmm. Men mm -hmm. are fixers. <laughs> yeah. And you we can't. can't Lots, most of the things you can't fix, right. you just want to be listened to. Yep. 
And then they get into the emotional thing and rant for me. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> so it's not, it, I, I like your explanation of it. My husband was a hands on for children. And, um, you know, it, they turned out okay. <laughs> but I had to do a lot of work. And sometimes I just wanted to break, but I usually didn't get a break. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was going to add to that, too. That's one thing that Tim is really great about is the minute he comes home, he takes the kids, and I get a That's little good. bit of downtime. And that is, especially at this age, I think, is really... <laughs> so, husbands, let's just... <laughs> Just, yes. just walk in the door. Yes. Just be ready. Just be That's ready. Really Take them, you know. If, <laughs> even if it's 15 yeah. minutes for me to go upstairs and, like, lay on my bed and just have quiet and nobody touching me that's great <laughs> i'll take it yes yep you guys have kind of said what i had planned to say like the fixing part mm -hmm. of things like i just want to tell you this it's you know i'm, I'm losing it right now but you know i just got to get it, it out doesn't mean i don't it's, love my children right yeah <laughs> i gotta get it out you're gonna have to listen I, you can't fix it but just listen to me mm -hmm. so i can get this off my chest and not be stressed out about it anymore um there was one other thing. I'm good. I'm looking, guys, because I wrote it down, and it was a um, common phrase. And oh, uh, let me see. Um, it was oh the saying a mother's work is never done. I feel like if men understood, and you know, dads understood, you know, a mother's work is never done. What that really meant, like, it's. As you both know, like, I think all of us kind of were at home with kids at one time and, you know, at times feel alone and, you know, it just never ends at times. And so having those breaks are extremely important. Um, just if they knew all of what, you know, a mother has to do, it just, it doesn't end even when they've gone to bed at night. You're right. still processing things even throughout the day. Even if they're the at day. the grandparents yeah. for the weekend, you're right. still thinking, you're still in mom yes. mode. Yes, yeah. To it just that doesn't off. shut, it doesn't shut off very easily. So unless you have, you know, some sort of hobby that you can do on your own, take mm -hmm. your mind off everything, that helps. But I guess I think that would be helpful if men understood that. And, and, and like you said, like having them do something that you didn't have to ask them to help with, um, They've just done it already. Like that means a lot. So mm -hmm. that's my suggest suggestion. All right. So those are good ones. And we are that way. We love to fix things. Yep. <laughs> so, but sometimes yeah. it's like moms have think they have to be everything that's at right. all. Yeah. Dads think they have to Dads fix have to They fix can't do all that, and men can't always fix things. And sometimes you have to say to your husband, "I have, I've learned I have to say, I have to preface it with." I'm not asking you to fix it. I'm yeah. not asking for your opinion. I'm just talking. And that way he true. knows in advance. <laughs> that is true. I like that I never knew enough to do that. <laughs> I like, wish you had like, told me that earlier. Hey, we've only been in this 10 years. <laughs> well, it's going on 51 for me. <laughs> now, Rosemary, did you see a change as, you know, now you have adult kids. How? <clears throat> your husband interacts with them, is it still fix it? No, not. He gets concerned and he uh, shares his concerns with me and neither one of us can fix it. And they do, he doesn't now. With the grandkids, he's, he's different with the grandkids than he was with our oh, old yeah. kids. The grandkids can change. basically do yep. anything. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not, not you know, not our own children. Well, right. we couldn't get by with that, you know. Yep. But yeah. Grandpa lets us do this, so you know, <laughs> it is a different. It is different. It's different for both of us, I guess. Yeah. Right. Okay. So last one. How does your faith in following Jesus? How's that helped you being a mom? And how have you leaned into that? Maybe during hard seasons, difficult seasons? Um, how, how's that work together? Well, I think it, for me, it's like, again, with the fixing, I have, I don't have control of any of this. God has control. I can't fix it. I can't make it better, even though I want to. And even though I worry tremendously, 
I don't know why, because I know deep down I can't do anything about it. God is the one that does the fixes. And I guess that's the main thing right there. God fixes it. I don't care. I can be up all night worrying and fretting about something <laughs> of one of my adult children or my grandchildren. And I'm not sure why I do that because <laughs> I know yeah. I can't change it. But God is the one. I just have to have lots of faith. Yeah. Yeah, I'll piggyback off of what you said. Um, it's just nice having someone besides family, friends, um, to lean on for support. I mean, someone's always with you. Jesus is always with us. Mm -hmm. um, just, I feel like you, for myself, like I couldn't mother very well if I didn't have a relationship with Christ because I have questions all the time and get stressed all the time. And so I have to go to the Bible. I have to go somewhere where I can look for help and look for guidance. And it's there. It's always there. It, it sometimes takes a while to get there at times. Um, you know, searching for certain Bible plans on my Bible app. It's super helpful. You can type in, you know, I'm feeling um, anxious, so I'm going to read something about anxiety. Help me through this path of whatever it is and to get through that way. I think, I think it's impossible to not have that relationship and do a good job mothering and parenting and without Christ. So that's just, that's what I think. Um, so my biggest thing is we, uh, Tim and I took a class. We've, we've actually taken four times. Um, we took it twice in our Sunday school class before we had kids just because that's what they were teaching and because everybody else had kids and we sat through it thinking, oh yeah, this is easy. This is great. And then we took it again um, when Evie was a newborn. And again, I was like, man, I got all these great tools. And we took it again last year, and we were the ones the whole time with our hands raised. Like, but what about this? Um, but it was a series um, by Ted Tripp, which is um, it's uh, getting to the heart of parenting. And um, what I've learned from that and just in parenting in general is that um, my job is not – to change my child's behavior. My job is to teach my child how to change their heart. And if I just go in there trying to like make them change the behavior, I can do that, but that's not helping them in the long run. It's, um, it's not helping them grow closer to Christ and leading them in the way that they need, need to go. And, um, one of those things I think is uh, we have tried really hard to be very transparent with um, our kids and say, you know, hey, mommy and daddy sin. Mommy and daddy need to ask for forgiveness. You know, I'm sorry that I lost my temper with you and I have to obey God just like you have to obey mommy. And I didn't obey God because I was angry and I disciplined you when I was angry. Um, and so for us, I think going back to that and just remembering that, you know, we've got little sinners, you know, and right now they don't, they don't have Christ and they don't, um, you know, they're learning that and we can, we can try our hardest to teach them to be good people, but, um, until we work on their heart and really teach them, um, why they need to behave that way, not just, we want you to do this because we want you to do this because we like this behavior, but you need to do this because this is what the Bible says. And this is thinking about others um, above yourself. And, um, you know, and then also we, like I said, we, once we learned that, once we figured out that Evie could learn Bible verses pretty easily, we, we took that and used it to our advantage. <laughs> and so we, we frequently quote um, Colossians 3.20, which is children obey your parents and the Lord um, for this is pleasing to him. And she knows that. So we're able to say to her, it doesn't mean she follow, follows it most <laughs> of the time, but, you know, we're able to say to her, you know, Evie, why are you in timeout? You know, you're in timeout because this, and what does the Bible say? And she reluctantly will tell you, children, <laughs> obey your parents. Um, and so I guess for me, that's been like the biggest thing is like, in those moments when I'm really frustrated with the behavior, remembering that, um, you know, we're, we're working on the heart. We're not just working on the behavior. And those moments where I see her heart and I see it turning 
you know, a little bit, it's like, oh, you know. Yeah, those would be some of the yeah. best moments. So that's one thing I remember I wrote down, but I didn't say it was, you know, having your kids talk about God when you've not even brought anything right. up about it recently or, you know, it's not a subject you were just talking about and they're asking questions mm -hmm. and something else you said that reminded me of a something they were asking about yesterday and we were talking about um but anyways it's it's just really that's a good best moment type of feeling as right. well yeah. um, or when they you know they, they ask to pray it. at night you know and yeah. they'll think of somebody you know that we haven't necessarily talked about or thought about and you know she'll say we need to pray for you know so and so and yeah those moments that you realize wow it's something is getting in there <laughs> despite the way the day has been right. yeah. something is clicking and you know, and then, you know, like what you said, letting go. And I, I like to be in control. I like to, you know, I've got my way of things and knowing that I can't choose for my children for them to follow God, I, that I want that. I can pray for that. I can, you know, I can teach them the word and pray that it won't come back void, but I, I can't choose salvation for them. That's something they will have to choose on their own. And you know, just praying now that they will, you know, we, we try to pray as much as we can, um, as often as we, rem re we remember to um, pray for their salvation because, um, you know, the thought of them not accepting that is just more than I can, more than I can stand to think about. So. Well, you have to get the basics there when they're little. Yep. Uh, because when they get older, oh, yeah. yep. you're... Really kind of controlling your no, yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Don't tell me that. <laughs> you think, you know, you think you're, and I'm not <laughs> diminishing the, what you're saying when they're little, but it's so much harder mm -hmm. when they're older yeah, because you really have no control. And, and that's part of really the thing. Is, if you teach them when they're little, it's a lot easier than when they get older and they get in trouble and no, you know, there has to be consequences. And that's the the course that we took, which I'm gonna plug again because everybody should take this course, even if your kids are older, because it goes through all the different ages. But um and you can you can YouTube it and watch it. But um getting to the heart of parenting. Um but he talks a lot about that. Like do the hard work when they're little so that hopefully as they get older, make it won't decision. be quite as hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm like, man, we're getting through the hard stuff now so that it'll be easier later. <laughs> All of three of my children are Christians and my grandkids. Uh, one of them, a little bit of questioning. They were raised in the church, but um, after they've been to college, it ch the liberal schools, it changes their mind and then they begin to question. Uh, one of my sons was that way. And the other son, who was ornery, <laughs> you wouldn't think that it would bother him. <laughs> 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 Do you know that so-and-so is an atheist? And I go, no, he's not. He says he is. And I go, no, he's not. <laughs> and then, no, he wasn't. And he's as an adult, he's turned back to Christ. So you've got to, when they're little, and, that that, and they may wane from that yeah. first as they go through life. They may turn from that. But once you get them there, I think, I really believe they will go back because they, they've been taught the difference. Okay, this is, you want to share anything else? Time. Is there anything else that you're like, Ed, you should have asked and you didn't? You could throw that in right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just think, I think it's good that we have have three different age groups. No yeah. school, school, and adults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, you know, I've been through all the things that you guys are experiencing. And, you know, I'd say good or bad. I I'm done. You know? <laughs> but are you but really, not, are you are you really, ever really done? No, really. Once a mom my mom my mom would disagree. Once a mom, yeah, <laughs> She's once, watching my kids right yeah. now. <laughs> once a mom, you're always a mom. I don't care how old your kids are. Yeah. You're always a mom. 
and it'll be that way forever. Yep. Well, great. Well, thank you. You guys are wonderful. Yeah. Told you would. <laughs> right? It's not bad at all. So all right. we're going to pray for you and for all the moms out there uh, as they continue to lead and direct in their homes. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Tarek and Callie and Rosemary. Their stories, their uh, leaning into you in hard mom moments. And Father, for helping them and guiding them currently in the days that we're in being a mom. I thank you for that. And I am so grateful they were so willing to come today and be honest and open about uh, their journey and their story of being a mom. And we pray for all the moms out there that you would encourage them during this time where maybe some of them are trying to figure out what to do and some of them are trying to do the best they can for their families, that you would just encourage them and help them and strengthen them. Uh, we thank you for leading us and guiding us in whatever time and season that we are in. Uh, we are so grateful for our moms and their impact and influence in our life. And we just pray you would just bless all the moms today and just encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.